contact. When you have one hand in contact, two hands in contact, and you're in this range that Sifu was talking about, you're, you're inside boxing, you're inside kicking, and you've touched, but you're, you're not yet grappling. You're not yet grappling. So it's a very small range that's just, just before it really starts to turn into wrestling. And this is where, what he was talking about, is that you can position and strike your way out of this position. It's a very small range, and if you miss it, you'll get placed. And you can take it down, or even worse, you can't get into it, and you'll get knocked out from the long range. So it's, it's a, I think, a really crucial component. So I'm drawing something. I'm going to start you uh, with your body, and we're going to start standing. So if you, you know, look at it like this, most of the Wing Chun curriculum is all standing content. You're, you're not really going to be on your back rolling around. You're not going to be tumbling too much, although usually a good, good teacher will offer some of this in their training. So you tumble a little bit and roll around. You some take down defense, but most of the courses. You're on your feet, you're standing, now, now how to make it work, okay? Whether you're in a fighting position or not, it's, it's kind of irrelevant. So I'm gonna have you guys do some training while I talk, all right? First thing you gotta see is, is uh, I've drawn a little illustration of the body from its side. I'm gonna start from the ground up, okay? So you have your foot, and if you look at your foot, feel your foot, you know you have grip, grip. So what, what you can start with is grabbing the ground with your toes, all right? I'm gonna have you guys just, just shoulder width, okay? If you look at all the temples that have been built in the history of mankind, that they're, they're all, Pyramid in some way, shape, or form. They all come out to the base, they come up to the top, and this is because we know how to build because we're sensitive to gravity. So we feel the force of gravity pushing us down. And the first shape you want to try to make with yourself is pyramid. And this can be as big or as small as you like, but generally your, your shoulders are going to kind of tell you how wide you should be. All right, so um, foot up. So from the foot, what you're doing in your feet, before you start to turn the knees in or do anything you know, that looks strange or funny, okay, grab. All right, and that grab is going to teach you how to actually hold the ground. Okay, that's just one part, that's the foot. So you have your foot, and you have an arch in the foot. Okay. And you want to try to stand in the middle of that arch, in the middle of it. Okay? So your weight, how far to the front, how far to the back, you need to find the middle. So this recurring theme of finding the center, finding the middle, this is what I talk about constantly. Find it, maintain it, discover where the other person's middle is, wreck it, throw it down, knock it over, twist it, turn it, all these things. Start, start with your own. Right? So I've got my pyramid, I'm taking any kind of exotic shape work or anything like this. I got my foot, I grab. Okay? And you go into your ankle. And you're going to bend your ankles as far as they'll go until you hit the band of tension. You have an Achilles tendon that rolls back. And this is storing potential power. So you just basically sit down into the bands. All right? Some people are going to have more depth range than others. If you have really weak ankles, um, you, know, you might be higher up than people who have really strong ankles. It's not a good idea to fight at the bottom because you're putting a lot of tension on your ankle load. So I like to practice, find the base of what my ankle will give me, and then I come off of it just a little bit, a little bit. Now you've got to manage this, okay? So this is no, no knee, no ankle, okay? And then I roll the knees and ankles, and all of a sudden I've got that pressure, that spring load, all right? Then I'm going to give you classical shapes. So we kick our heels out a little bit, give ourselves a little bit more base, and we're going to guide our knees down into our toes, okay? So I went ankle. Uh, foot, foot, grab the foot, ankle, load the ankle so that you can feel your Achilles band, tighten up, load up, okay? Then you're going to bend the knees. Now, I've changed your foot positioning so that I can start to give you some classic muscle development exercises. You press your knees in, you point them down, and you want to take your kneecap and run it right over your first two toes, okay? If you do this like this, toes straight ahead, and then you look to press the knees in, you're going to be on your arches, and this is very bad for you. Very bad. And you go and fight, and you've got this one back leg that won't give you any power. Okay? So I'm, I'm doing this to relate it eventually to when we turn, and you observe what this looks like. If I've got a good grip, if I've got a strong ankle, a strong knee, I have the potential to release power. Okay? So I'm going to put you in the stance. Just go ahead and drop down. You've got your foot, you've got your ankle, you've got your knee. If this is uncomfortable, what you can do is open it a little bit, but the goal is to get the knee power to drift out to a center line. Okay? And then I'm going to put the opponent in that spot. So you can have the toes a little more open if this feels comfortable, or a little more flexed if that feels comfortable. You know, I'll let you guys manage that today. All right? But what's really important is that you hit the band in your ankle. The Achilles tendon is what's holding you from going further. Okay? And then the grip. So I want to grip and let go. Right? Grip and let go. You notice that as you activate the grip, it tends to raise you. As you let it go, it lets you fall. Okay? So this is just a basic exercise. If you can sort of keep this shape, now you're training, you're warming up the thighs, you're warming up the legs. I haven't talked about posture at all, I really just want to focus on the legs, okay? So pressing down, and you can unload, load, unload, and load. And these are just standing exercises you can do. In the classroom, I'll just have you stand still, because it's hard work just standing still, okay? You got flex in the ankle, your calves are on, your foot is on, your quads are on, your knees are on. You are yang in your legs, as much as you can hold it for. 
Every second you spend like this is the training, every moment, every breath, okay? Because you're firing muscles constantly, constantly. Now, just stay like this. I know it's like you're, you're already starting to warm up, hopefully. You want to make adjustments to your grip, make adjustments at any time, okay? This is uh, grabbing the ground like a suction cup, okay? So for this size horse, this is a skill set of holding your place in, in, in your standing position, okay? So you see what I've done in the knee on the side. You can look at it in the profile. I've gripped. And we certainly have this chamber position, okay? So potential stored energy here, potential stored energy here, all right? All right, so, all right, so just stay like that, okay? They call this, in, in, uh, in Cantonese, they call this yi ji kin yang ma, okay? And so the, the yi ji is the character two. There's two horizontal lines. The, the bottom one is longer than the top one, like this. Two, okay? And this is what they mean by this. Although other people will give it different translations, but this is... Two lines, and that represents the feet and the knees. Your heels can take a placement wider if this feels comfortable, narrow if that feels comfortable. I'm going to let you guys mix with that, okay? It's, it's unique to you. Let it feel good for you, for yourself. All right, stance. Now, um, once you've got this, now you're going to start to get challenged. Your legs are going to get warm, and you're going to, you know, if you're slumping, you're going to get more tired than if you were postured. All right, so now we take the last degree, and we go up to the hip, and we take it to the crown. So in the hip, we call it the dam team, which is like a an energy center, if you give a name, you could call this sort of muscle pack area the center of the human body. We're, we're born from this, and then in the inside of us is an actual series of muscle packs. The front connects to the back, the back connects to the front, the left connects to the right, and it all converges and crisscrosses into this center. If you just pull your belly button to your back, boom, you're strong, you feel good. If I came around, I was like, dude, we're gonna lift some, uh, we're gonna do some, some chopping wood, and I'm gonna have you hold wood, and I just start stacking wood on you, stacking wood, stacking wood. Go, go, go. And all of a sudden, your posture changes. So the first thing is the center point, okay? Yeah, boom, get strong, okay? Now the, the glutes are gonna have to activate to some level, okay? So you sit down, actually, and you turn on your tail, okay? Stay like that if you can. I'm gonna warm you up with this, right? So the glutes are on, I got my, my foot, my ankle, my knee, my glutes. The tail will roll as a byproduct of activating the glutes. And now what I've created is, I'm gonna do it on the side here, is a pyramid. Okay? Mind you, obviously we're clamping the top of this and standing at the top, but I am standing here at the apex. And that's the dumb team. Okay? Just like that. Okay? Then you have two more energy centers that you're going to look to stack. Okay? So the next energy center is here, at uh, where, your, where your breastplate opens up and your, your diaphragm sits. Okay? If this is slumped or fallen, it's not horrible, you can fight like this, but you're going to have a hard time really getting control of your power until you neutralize it, okay? And then you can move and flow and lift and push and pull. So you need to be able to spin from this, and if you've let it sink and you've sort of got bad posture, you're not going to be able to benefit from it. So you stack it right over the down team, okay? This is just standing still. This is not when you're moving. Now when you move, this kind of thing happens. You get thrown, you get pushed and pulled, you're making adjustments. You've got to manage this. You've got to sense all three of these locations, okay? And then the last one is the third eye, which you could just call the center of your actual head. If your head is dunked, if your head is twisted, tipped back, you're going to have a, a really hard time fighting. So it can generally float where it needs to if you're slipping and dodging and moving, but if you're just standing still and you're trying to train all these elements together, put it in the middle. And you just stare out to oblivion and you just hang out like this. This is meditation. And the arms pocket, so you pull your arms up, pinch your shoulder blades. So I, I drew this the other week uh, to try to talk about this in my class. You can see what I'm trying to illustrate here is the back of the body, okay? With a gigantic X that runs on the whole back. So the left side controls the right side, the right side controls the left side, okay? And this X actually occurs from shoulder to hip. What you can see in this illustration is the, the I don't even know, I'm not, I'm not a scientist here, but there's this gigantic band, the trapezius runs on the top of this. And it connects here near where the dantin is, okay? The thoracic vertebrae that turn into cervical vertebrae. And this is a very common place where people will lose their power. Thoracic and, and, uh, and so forth, they, they tank. This, this position falls. And this is slumped. These are old people who see this. We would defeat this by leveling. Okay? I usually just tell people to, to, to level their heart, and that'll give them most of the rest of the sense of this. So if I just take my heart, if my heart is falling, I pick it neutral. Okay? This will just give you ability to move and change. All right? So, all right, so a couple minutes we stand like this. Now, getting out of this, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to take a, an opening shape. We're going to circle, and we're going to come back into it. Okay? This is an actual technique. So you're holding your hands, circle and drop. Circle and drop. Okay? And back into it. 
it. So there, you wouldn't just stay like this. This is not the whole part of the system. This is just for weight training. I'm training whatever I weigh on top of my body, on top of my legs. That's weight, actual weight. I take a plate, I give you weight. Boom, you're, you're lifting weight. So you weigh what you weigh. You stand there, good. You get good at standing there. Now you try to move. You ice skate. You're skiing, whatever you want to call it. Same then, thing if you have a lead, right? Yes, now if I have a lead, I'd yeah, circle around and take that, take okay. that position so it starts to move. For now, look, I want you to see it in a flat plane. Yeah. So you can kind of see this tape on I'm standing on almost. And so you can kind of see how I come back to the return point. This is a classic drill. You practice this. If you lift up too high, when you come down, you might not have a landing. The guy might take his leg away. So generally, you're going to sweep low, and you're really close to the ground, but you're not, you know, you're not trying to stick to it. You're brushing it. Okay? So usually we ground up, I circle, I put the ground down here. Circle, the ground down here. When you get really good, you can punch the ground. But I don't have you guys on soft enough groundwork to train this. I'd rather see you train it outdoors if you're going to punch. When you get really good, that foot actually hits the ground. In order to have power for that, I have to have skill in the one leg. Okay, in order to come down. This is really a recurring theme in your Jeet Kune Do also, is that to get some of these throws, you've got to be awesome on the one you were still standing on. Okay, or you're going in for one, you still have to have good balance on the one you were standing on. So, Slow motion training will teach this to you. Come out, you hit. Come out, you hit. Okay. Now this heel, when it cuts back, I'm going to try to hit with the heel. These are, these are basic sweep actions. It's important you guys know some of these things so that let's say I was in a place like this and my leg gets ripped, I just take it away, and either I come back into a place where I can put my weight back down comfortably, or I would attack back down. Okay. So just one yeah. 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 So Chinese for this, they call this hyun ma. We mean circling the horse. Okay? You can stabilize between sets, or you can just run one into another. This is an exercise I'm just giving to you, warming you up. You want to get your grip back in, take a second, just grip in. I need you guys to feel confident and, and comfortable and want why I'm doing it like this. It's going it's to happen over time. I just talked about it. You see this triangular shape. You see the pressing of my knee shape when I land. Knees give you power, knees give you root. Yeah. Keep going. You always move your foot when you're in a sweep though. Usually, yeah. um, it's very uncomfortable to come over to here and still be like this. Now I'm talking about when you go like this. I open the door and you go steps. back. Okay. So I open the door. It's going to just open my hips up more comfortably. I was clamped. This is, this is um, classical stuff. So I'm holding this shape for the aid of standing still to build a very strong pyramid. Once you begin to move, you, you can't deny physics and anatomy. You have to put your toes in line with your knees. And so it should be comfortable. These are, you know, if you go slow enough, you'll see this. So I come back, I clamp. Open the door, circle, clamp. You may not have the time to open the door, not always, if you're really fast. So you may be able to run it from this. Okay? But um, I don't prefer it because I feel like my hips are a little bit so Open the door, stand back down. Open the door, stand back down. We're talking about the difference of this, though. But if you make a little micro adjustment to get you started, this is momentum moving. Okay. Now I've got your hands going because at the same time I'm training this structure back here. Everybody's able all, you look at all martial artists, they begin, brand new students, this is them. Okay? And, and you beat the hell out of them. It's great. Feels good. You're a champ. Okay? You see food and you're like, I knock everybody down because this is how they show up. And so you've got to fix all these things. They show up with no strength. They show up with no heart. So hold the heart. Okay? I'm taking my back muscles and I'm flexing them. Mm. That's part of the byproduct of just standing like this. I know it doesn't seem like much, but if you don't hold the back muscles, when you go and toss hands to the front, what is there to anchor? You need to have an anchor. Mm. So the posture has to be there. That's why they stand like this so much, so that you can practice having good posture. Okay? Open the door, open the door, open the door. Just one of the many ways to trade stances. Now, I like to ski with it a little bit, and there are times where you would not do it in place. You would actually start moving with it, okay? And this would get you in and around people's leg position. Can I demo with you for a second, Paul? I just want to show you, keep doing this, but I just want to show you guys some possibilities. So, if I was already in a place like this next to him, okay, this action would be what I'd use to take him down. So, if you have the right vantage point, you punch the bottom out. Same on the other side, I'm here. Now, I don't try to hook him or stay on one leg. I try to go back to my horse. Okay? Now, if you get there and you get strong, I've got to come back out. So I need to be familiar with the original point. This. Coming back to 
Okay. All right, you see this is what take your spots. This is where you were thinking for that. So putting it in, inserting it in. Keep going. You guys uh, feel sort of feel comfortable with it. Go ahead and actually add a little step. Just be mindful that you don't hurt your heel when you drop. So I put a little power in, but not more than a foot in. It. So if you've got shoes on, you can hit the ground harder. If you're barefoot or you're on a hard substance like this, you can't really push. I think the best training is outdoors in grass. You can be barefoot, you're connected to the earth, you can hit the ground. You start to get really intelligent about your feet. When you go and grab, and actually there's something in your grip. And when you go and run, and you're ripping grass up. That's sometimes some of the best feelings. If you're at the beach, you're in the sand, this is the same idea. The toes are now a part of us. It's lost when our feet are in shoes or we're on spongy mats. Okay, you come back, strong. Back into the horse. And I, you notice I'm one leg, and then I come back to two. So you have two columns or one column. That's it. When I come back, and I, like, a little bit of a... You want to see about keeping your, your three structures all intact. Yeah. So yeah, so your glutes would be on. I come off, glutes are still on. Now I'm not talking on, I'm like, oh, as tight as I can hold. They're, they're active. They're, they're on, they're flexed a little bit, you have control of your middle. Your middle is not falling as you make your action. We have a tail. We have like three little bones that sit there behind um, behind the sacral plate. And in this shape, in this illustration, they'll, they'll roll. If you leave your tail behind you, and you expect to lift weight, you'll fatigue your back. Unless, of course, you expect to you got him up. <laughs> then that's a good time for it. But otherwise, most of the time, if you're fighting something out there, you can't afford to not have your waist moving. Remember, the opponent is there, so his pushes, his punches, his pulls, these are weights, actual weights. I have to catch those weights and manage them. So if I'm like this, try and expect to do something like that much luck. You've got to be here. Here's your posture, your chamber. Ankle potential, Achilles potential, knee potential, hip potential. Now, landing like this is good, but the whole point is to be able to open to explode, okay? So you start to see this. So to be able to open is, is the point. Now I'm gonna turn the horse, and that's how it would open. I would actually launch off to one side. So two legs is just for turning, okay? Would you see this, you guys understand this concept here? And if I looked at it from a front view, we we're very interested in the base of a tree, the base of the root. So they talk about, they call it root, okay? Like your, your toes reach out to the ground and grab. Okay? And you try really hard to practice becoming like a tree, standing still, holding root, and your hands are branches, and your breath is the breeze, all these things. Right? You just meditate on the concept of this. But hold root, grip, boom. In, in a mission to be able to stand your ground. Let's say I have, to, I have a family in the, in, in the other room, and this is a doorway. I can't give up this spot. How would I do that? I have to have nasty grip of that spot. Nobody's coming in. If they try to move in, they can have one action of root, and then I'm back in, so you manage not losing ground by holding your grip. That's not always possible, though. So you, know, you have, to, have to know when, when you can hold this and when you have to release it, okay? Sometimes this gets overrun, and releasing it is the answer. Now he falls, now he's done, okay? This is getting overrun, so I leave that hemisphere, I come out, boom, okay? So you have to see that you have two hemispheres. Two hemispheres, all right? So now we get to the next footwork. So I'm gonna travel off to one hemisphere, and then just insert my stance in underneath the other part. So I end up walking a triangle. Okay, I'll have you guys do this now. So you have the base, you understand the base? Now we work the circle, but I'm now going to put it in the front. All right. I'm going to practice initially. I have you guys sort of feel comfortable in the weight range here. You can be front, back, but you don't want to be totally, totally in the front. 50% between the two is fine. I prefer to train 60, 70, even 100%. So this leg is nothing. That takes a lot more strength. And eventually you would search for this, so this leg is empty. So if someone tries to hook it, you take it away, or you hit them with it. Okay? So anyway, so this is walking the triangle. Now, of course, you guys know some guard training. You just put your hands up, or you can continue to pocket. It doesn't matter. Okay? Whatever leg I put forward, that's maybe what hand I put forward. And you trade over. Okay? Walk the triangle. Now, if my opponent was really big, maybe my side step has to be really big. Maybe they're rushing in, and I have to take a big step. Other times they might just fake and move, and I just need a small step. Okay? 
okay? Manage it. So whatever width I created here, this is my body, I like to train it like this. I'm going to do a, a triangle that give or take fits my size. Okay, so it's a unique to you guys. So come out, come back in. What you see in the landing is the results of training this with pressure, okay? So that when you sit down, you have the, the grip, Achilles tendon pressure, knee power, hip power, ready to launch. Of course, you want to use it, but I'm ready. This is the whole point. Just get to the point where you're ready. Okay. Is your front leg bent, Anthony? Yes. Sorry, you can't see the things. All yes. Right. Um, all right. So I'm going to give you guys a weight ratio to just tell you, like, try it like this. Let's go 60% on the back leg, 40% on the front leg. What this gives me is a potential to remove this. But um, if I'm 50% or 60% front loaded, when I go to take this away, there's a weight transfer that telegraph tells everybody what you're up to. I charge in and you see that. If I'm 50-50, this is better because there's only a small weight, weight, weight transfer. If I'm 60-40, this is better because there's less. 70-30, 80-20, 90-10, 100%, you don't see the transfer, you can hit. Now, you'd make this zip happen in, like that. I'm here, I've got a little weight on the thing, the guy runs in, my body mass is a little too far forward, I can open my stance and hit them just with this extra range of that potential. Okay. So uh, if you have 100%, 50 on each, that's good, that's good, that's how we trade this. Now that means I can go and throw weight from side to side. But at a certain point when you transfer, you're going to be 100%, and then you're going to land, and you've got to manage the, the fall of that. Okay. So single leg training, double leg training, single leg, double leg. Okay. Again, you could step in for this spot, kick in for this spot. You don't have to land, you can go back. Okay. Maybe you come around and you just want to cut the bottom back out. These are, these are options. Okay? What's important is that, go ahead and put your hands up. Like just hand guard, one in, the, one in the front, one in the back. One is in a medium range shape, one is in a short range shape. Okay, so you've got your two hands doing something. Okay? I don't want to slump the posture, so I'm still kind of neutral. Fine. I'm going to show you footwork now so I don't have to talk about it later. It's going to be a soon. Okay? Out, come back in. On a back step, if you have to, what, what, how would that done? Nothing on a back step? If you have to back step. I'm in this place. Uh, mm -hmm. This is actually an answer for not needing to back step. Oh. So, um, <coughs> Steve, come here for a second. Let's say he's lined up like this. Now, I've taken the triangle and I tipped it. The empty spot is over there. Let's say he walks in and he's got pressure, he's got me here, and this position's being overrun. I leave this position and re reinsert it oh. from the side. So it's intended to give you the answer to not have to run away. Okay, so hold on. If I'm here like this and he comes in, I can apply it on the single side. Just, just one side action. Yeah. If I'm already in the front lead, I just leave that spot and I take the other one. That's right. This application that. Still, now you see this triangle concept, but it's actually drawn on the ground. So I come out, I come in. If this alignment is overrun, so if my power, my root fighting, this root's getting pressured, 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 I'm getting bowed back, leave. Fighting from the side. So it's a flank step. Flank step. Okay? Kung Tao, Kali, Chi Kundo, they all use the same triangle. Yeah, exactly. It's just some triangles. I, I didn't make it up. I was studying it. Oh my God, I want to understand it better. Okay? Come out, I come in. Come out, I come in. When you trade weight, you just don't want to be falling all over the place. So, if you pick the line, so pick a line on the ground. I tape, I had tape triangle, you had to put a boxing ring in it, so my triangle's not good. Put your center on this. When I come into the, the drawing shape on the pattern, I have the same front foot. But what I have that's different is the back. That'll help see if you need to. Okay? So, the same front. And you actually end up leaving that territory. So, keep going. I just draw on some theory here, you guys can see this. If this is the battlefield, I'm standing here, using my shoulders, give or take. <laughs> okay? I'm in this spot, and if I was just standing like this and somebody went to go punch me, if I stand here, I'm, hopefully I have good hands and block it, but if I leave, well then they hit nothing. So usually when you create this, um, you've got a potential to go to one hemisphere or the other, okay? if you're standing in the center. If I've picked a lead, now I'm going to be limited by that lead. Okay? So whatever leg is in front, this limits how you can change, what you can change with. Whether I want to go to this one and back, okay, we'll come back. All right, so we give you simple stuff: the triangle in, or the circle back, or sometimes just holding this. Okay. 
this can, in fact, I've already been considered there. If I get in here and he starts to try to lift me, I can hold his, his grip um, and actually clamp him from being able to lift me, sweep me. So just holding, this is a very rare application for this, but you can actually use this to, to maintain the position. And an even better transition would be in behind him like this. Okay, why would you use it like this? Mm. Hard to get to, you know, to actually accomplish that distance, but you know what, you find it, next thing you know, you get the results in, okay? Circle, the triangle, okay? Good, all right, so last ingredient now is once you've landed, this sometimes is not enough. He's still too far away. Or I left, he moved in, um, but you know, he rebounded and he's over there now. So I want to keep going. Do I just go, oh, oh I, I, I can sell their horse. Then we shut. Okay, so the last ingredient here. I circle, I step in, and then I make a shuffle step. Okay? I come out, come back, make a shuffle step. Okay? And our shuffle step is usually a heel shuffle step. So the heel grabs the ground, and then I slide. And you can choose how much of a slide you want, but generally we don't heel plant the place, because if you have to stop and box from this, you're not going to do too well. So I would only heel replace if I'm coming forward and going into more. You have to commit if you're going to heel replace, right? So we come here. It's less commitment. Because